So, I have just finished work, and I have just got home, and on my way home, I went and picked up an order that I made a couple of days ago, and that is, if you haven't already guessed from the thumbnail of the video, this. This is the LEGO Ideas Pirates of Barracuda Bay set, and this is the set that I was talking about at the end of my last video, uh, the large surprise that I uh, was hoping to be able to get, and it was going to originally order from uh, lego.com, but then found it somewhere else um, for a little bit off, which was fantastic, and managed to get that on a couple of days collection. So I've got it, and I am so excited to build it. This is the largest set and the most expensive that I have ever bought, um, so it's going to take me a long time to build it, and I'm going to take my time because I really want to enjoy it. So I am going to make myself a cup of tea and I am going to get started building and I will see you all again when it's finished. So that was Monday. Today is Friday and at long last I present the finished set, which is really having a difficult time fitting into the camera here. I will just pan up to let you see the full extent of it. So it goes up and up and up and up all the way to the top of the main mast. And then I'll go back down to the base of the island. Um, this is a massive set. Um, it takes up a huge amount of space, both as an island and as a ship. Um, probably more than any other set I've got. Um, obviously, if you take the masts off, they uh, do occupy a large amount of the space, uh, especially vertically. But uh, the sheer amount of pieces and of different builds that you make in this set is absolutely amazing. I, you know, If you couldn't tell already, I absolutely love this set. Um, as I said in my little intro, it is the biggest set and the most expensive set I've ever bought, just by a little bit in both cases. Um, it would have been a little bit more expensive. It retails here in the UK for £180. I managed to get it for £152.99. Uh, that was from John Lewis, which had it 15% off. Um, not sponsored or anything, definitely not sponsored, although sponsor me if you want to. Um, but I've just figured at the end of the day, it had a couple of days collection that I could do. And for 15% off, I'm okay not to get the VIP points for it. So it didn't actually take me five days to build this, or four days, however you want to count it. Um, I built it over a uh, couple of evenings. And I, I did try and take my time, honestly, but it got to a point where I really wanted to finish it. Um, and I finished it up as you see it now. This is the island form, the actual Barracuda Bay itself. Um, and that's the form that you get if you build all the way through the instructions from start to finish. Now, obviously, one of the big selling points of this set is that it can be rebuilt into an updated version of the Black Seas Barracuda the famous Lego pirate ship. Um, in fact, it may well have been the first Lego pirate ship. It's far too old for me to actually uh, have been around to see it, um, but it's definitely something I have seen images of. Um, and in fact, fingers crossed, I might be doing a comparison video if I'm able to borrow a version of that set off somebody. Um, so I've got my fingers crossed for that. Hopefully that'll come out soon. Um, so like I was saying, that is a big selling point of this set. So I have already... Uh, converted this into the finished ship and it is just as fantastic as I was hoping it would be and I have now spent uh, I don't know sort of 20 minutes half an hour converting it back again um, so for those of you who don't know there are instructions to convert this from uh, the island to the ship but there aren't actually instructions to convert it back so it takes a little bit of reverse engineering uh, following steps backwards so if there are a couple of things out of place that'll be why. Um, I did take as much care as I could, but um, it's a very large set and there are a lot of details. In fact, I will grab the box that I've put the spares in just to show you how much is left over. So this here is my uh, spares box just in a clean old takeaway container. Um, some of this admittedly is uh, weapons, which should be given to the minifigures, which I will go through in a second. I've just lined them all up in front of there. Um, there's just so much to get through in this review. Um, so yeah, that's the spare and accessory pieces. So there are a hell of a lot of them. Obviously, small pieces, but some really nice ones. You've got those gold epaulets there, machete, 
um, some oars, cups, loads of different things, which is really great, including a couple of spare strings for the rigging, which is actually really good. Um, not that there's anything wrong with the ones that are on there at the moment, but it's nice to get spares. So as I've done with reviews in the past, I will get started by having a look at those minifigures. And then I think I'm going to pop them to one side so that I can get on and review the build itself. So starting off, we have some of the more recognisable minifigures in this set. On the left, we have got Captain Redbeard himself, or should that be Captain Greybeard in this case? This is an updated version of the original minifigure that came in the Black Seas Barracuda. Um, wonderful detailing that they've done, basically just updating it to the more modern Lego style. And I love the addition, as I said, of the grey beard, just showing that 30 years have passed since that original set came out. On the right, we have got a slightly less recognisable minifigure. This is Lady Anchor. Um, not quite sure what position she holds in the crew. I'm imagining first mate or something similar. Um, she's quite different from her original counterpart. Um, basically back then, Lego had only just started doing minifigures that had uh, anything other than the classic smiley face. So uh, they were just finding their feet in terms of depicting uh, different varieties of people, uh, especially female minifigures at the time were a little bit strange to look at. Um, and this has definitely been updated to the more modern Lego style. Spinning them around, you can see the details that they have on the back. Um, only two minifigures in this entire set have got printing on the uh, reverse side of their heads, and I will show those when they come along. Very simple detailing, but very nice. I particularly like Redbeard's uh, gold epaulets, which look fantastic. And as well as that, he's got his peg leg and his hook. So a very, uh, very typical, but very appropriate pirate captain for this set. Next up, I thought I'd show you those minifigures which do indeed have printing on the backs of their heads, but we'll take a look at the fronts first. So on the left, we have got Tatuga, who I believe is based on an original minifigure, um, although he's definitely gained a few more tattoos since that, uh, since that original set. Amazingly printed minifigure, you can see the details of the mermaids, the anchor, the parrots, and then on the reverse, you've got the ship itself, which is fantastic. And I particularly like the uh, sort of belt or sash printed around his waist with the blue and gold, uh, which just makes a nice transition into the plain green legs or trousers. Um, interestingly, none of these minifigures actually have any printing on their legs, um, which is strange in a way, but also it doesn't really stand out. Um, and I think they look good. Here's a nice facial printing on the front and a nice hair piece, which I think may have actually originally been created for the Pirates of the Caribbean line, so very appropriate. And then on the right, we've got an entirely original character for this set. This is Robin Loot. Ha ha ha, very funny Lego. Um, and she is, again, nice, very simple printing this time round. Uh, it's a shame that the yellow skin uh, skin tone on her torso it doesn't quite match the actual plastic, but it's a good attempt. She also comes with what is actually, uh, or was at the time of release, a brand new piece, which LEGO were able to get away with because it came out in the collectible minifigure series at the same time. That's a dual molded tricorn hat and hair combo, which looks fantastic. The hat itself is very similar to the one that LEGO have been making for years, um, in which we get, uh, I think, two in this set, so you'll be able to see a comparison. I'll just swap their faces round so you can see what they look like from the other side. So you can see Tatuga looks decidedly less friendly on this side. Um, other than that, not a massive change. And then Robin Loot has some dirt on her face. I think this head originated in the City Line, I think. Um, so either the City Line or CMF as a, a dirt biker. Um, but I think it's entirely appropriate and a good use of that head. And here we've got a pair of almost identical minifigures. These are the twins, Port and Starboard. Um, they claim to be twins, but they've actually got different faces, which I'll show in a second. Um, not new prints, I don't believe, and indeed one of them is a, uh, a rather famous Lego YouTuber who seems to be masquerading as a pirate. Um, anyway, nice prints for the torsos, showing their vests and the two different types of belt. One of these torsos is actually shared with another character, but uh, I think that's okay. Fairly generic pirate wear, and uh, they've got the matching bandanas and leg colours. Simple but nice prints around the back. And then of course they've got those wonderfully large moustaches. And these are in fact 
reproductions or updates of older minifigures again, um, which didn't have those uh, additional moustache components, um, which I think look absolutely fantastic, if a little bit ridiculous. I'll just take those off so you can see the faces underneath. And there we go. I think they look just as good without the moustaches on. Uh, in fact, the guy on the right looks uh, a little bit fiercer. Now you can see his grin. And we have our uh, favourite Lego YouTuber on the left. And here we have the last of our pirate crew. On the left, we have got Corsa Master Riggings, which is a, another wonderful pun. Thank you again, Lego. And on the right, we have Jack Dark Shark de Blooms, who is uh, the ship's boy. Although it says it's the ship's bosun, but uh, I think that's a little bit unlikely. Um, he's definitely pictured as being the lookout because he comes with a telescope. Um, so, hey, this is Lego. You can pretend that they are whoever you want them to be. Um, Rigging's uh, head is not new, that comes again from a city set I believe, although it's a perfect reuse here with the eye patch. He comes with the standard tricorn hat, uh, which you can compare to the one that Robin Lute is wearing. He's got a very simple torso with a waistcoat on the front and some nice detailing around the back. Uh, Jack Dark Shark de Blooms uh, is the one that has the uh, same torso as either Port or Starboard, I can't remember which. Um, but with the bag over the top of it, it's a little bit difficult to tell, and due to his short stature, I think he does look completely different anyway. Nice facial expression, but no back printing there. Interesting fact, the uh, name Dark Shark, or the nickname Dark Shark, actually comes from the uh, European name for the Black Seas Barracuda, or at least the UK name, which was called the Dark Shark, for... Reasons unknown. I don't know why they felt like they needed to change that, but uh, there you are. So it's another nice little Easter egg that LEGO have included. And last and definitely least, we have got two LEGO skeletons. Um, these are just standard skeletons for the most part. One has got the arms with the hands um, facing in the same direction as the shoulder joints, and one has got them at right angles to that, but you can swap those around as much as you want. And of course, the one on the left has got a uh, a leg missing and also a hat. Um, I can't quite remember the name of that type of hat, um, but they were the ones that appeared with the uh, both the Imperials, I think red coats and blue coats, basically the pirates' enemies from the uh, some of the classic pirate lines. So it's a nice little detail there, even if it is unprinted. Um, he does incidentally come with his other leg. Um, just the way that he's fixed to the floor is with that clip that's in place of it there. Um, these are good many figures, um, standard skeletons, but it's nice to get a couple of them. Don't really know whether they should be included in the minifigure um, uh, tally, but uh, they look good and they're a nice uh, ghoulish addition to the set. I think it's also important to point out that these minifigures do come with a lot of accessories. Uh, these are just some of the ones that I pulled off them before putting them on the rotating stands. So you can see there's all sorts of uh, swords and machetes and pistols and rifles. And then of course you've got a treasure map just here. There's two copies of this, one which is in uh, Redbeard's cabin. And you've also got the telescope that I mentioned that uh, Jack Doubloons is using for his role as a lookout. Also included in the set is a standard Lego shark, just in dark bluish grey, and also just a rowing boat, just small with a bare uh, few details, including oars and some seats and a flag at the back, just to complete the uh, whole look of the set. So now we've looked through all of the minifigures and a few of the extra little builds on the side, it is time to get on to the set itself. So that's the minifigures out of the way. There are a lot of them, um, 10 if you do include those uh, skeletons, as I said. Um, and I think that's quite appropriate for a set this size. And um, it's the same number that came in the assembly square modular building, which incidentally is the same price in the UK, um, but for about one and a half thousand more pieces. However, in this set, you do get a lot of large pieces. So you've got the boat hull pieces, you've got the mast pieces, um, you've got those printed uh, sails, some big base plates, some saucer pieces. Basically, you get a lot for your money. Um, even at £180 or the equivalent in other countries, this is definitely worth the money. And uh, for me, it 100% was at a lower price. So what I will do is we've had a good look at the overview of the island. What I'll just do is show you how it splits apart. Careful not to knock the rowing boat off. So the island itself just splits here. There is no physical connection between the two halves. They do slot together nicely, they're engineered that way, but quite sensibly there is no 
permanent or semi-permanent connection, purely because if you tried to pick it up with just a small connection, the whole thing would fall apart. So quite rightly, you pick it up in two halves. So this half of the island has got the middle section of the ship, and then this has got the uh, bow and the stern on it. So I think the most sensible thing to do uh, is to break it down, and we will do half at a time, starting with this section, uh, just because it's the first bit that you build. So the build itself alternates between building parts of the island and then building parts of the ship. So you build this section of the island first and then this section of the ship and then onto the other half. So getting in nice and close now, you can see the side of the ship that's normally hidden by the uh, other half of the island. Uh, there's not much different about this uh, than it is in its ship form, but that's okay because it's mostly hidden away. And then we get round to the front and this is the entrance to... Jose's Inn, which is actually named after the fan designer's dad, who got him into Lego and Lego Pirates in the first place, so it's a really nice little touch there. Um, then we've got the front of the inn there. Now, this is a feature which obviously wouldn't have been on the original ship, this, uh, I suppose you call it a bulkhead in a ship, but this wall that goes across the front there. Um, and it's actually not something that gets changed when you do turn it into a ship. Now, my uh, plan is to keep this in its ship form, but what I'm going to do is change a few things around and modify stuff so that it is uh, a difficult way to put it. Um, so it's more permanently a ship. I don't want to get rid of all of the features that um, are put in for when you turn it into an island. So that'll be going. Um, but for now, it does look really good. Nice use of tiles on their uh, sides. It's not technique there for the wooden panelling. And you've got plenty of room to put cannons to defend your island. So there comes with three cannons in the set. There's one, two here, and one on the other half of the island. Um, I love the use of these dish pieces around here to represent sand. They're fantastic. Two different sizes, a small one here, larger one here. Um, and they continue all the way around the island itself. Coming around to this side, you've got uh, more of these wooden walkways, which again are built in a kind of cool ramshackle way, just these pieces connected at one end and then put on at an angle, but I think the uh, overall effect is really good. There's also nice little details all the way around, such as you've got these little animals like crabs, and then you've even got little details with plants growing underneath where you ordinarily just wouldn't see it and you wouldn't expect any detail, but that's the level to which the designers of this set went, which is absolutely fantastic. Turning the set round even further, there is a buried stone idol, or half buried, and this is a nod to the Islanders sub-theme of pirates. Um, it's a recreation using pieces which still exist of an idol from one of those sets, which looks great. It's just a one of many little Easter eggs, um, which much better reviewers will have spotted more of. Um, as I said, I wasn't around for much of the original pirates run, so um, I'm not completely familiar with all of it, but I'll try and point stuff out when I can. Um, either way, it's a nice detail. Um, another thing to point out is these fantastic palm trees. Now, LEGO did used to make specific moulds for palm trees, both the trunks and the leaves, and they don't anymore. They were very specialised pieces, so it's nice to see that they've come up with an alternative build using uh, some Technic pieces and then one of these animal tails in reddish-brown, which looks fantastic, and there's even the detail of coconuts underneath the tree there. Um, it's also nice to see this piece here, which is in tan. Um, that piece originally was used in those old palm trees, and even though it's used as quite a lot of other things, including lanterns and other stuff, um, it's still classified as a plant piece, at least by Bricklink, and uh, here it is being used in its original form. Speaking of lanterns, there are a lot of the more modern style of lanterns all over this build. Um, I haven't counted how many, but uh, for something that was relatively rare when it was introduced with the revived Harry Potter theme, there are a lot of them uh, all in black around this set, and they look fantastic. Um, obviously, it'd be great if they lit up, and I know you can get kits to do that, so who knows, maybe I'll do that one day. Gosh, there's just a long, long list of things that I might do one day. Uh, there's one there, there's one up there, and they're dotted around everywhere else. Coming even further round, you've got uh, another palm tree, slightly taller, but the same build. Then you've got flowers decorating this uh, set of stairs and walkway, along with a dual moulded parrot in blue and yellow. And then we get up onto the ship itself. So this is the middle of the main deck of the ship. And like I said, there's a cannon up there, another lantern, various boxes and barrels and things. Um, bottles hiding down there in the corner and at the back we have got this cell which does actually come off the ship so I will just take that off so we can have a better look at it 
So this cell has uh, one very unfortunate occupant who looks like he's been in there far too long. That's one of the skeletons that I showed in the minifigure selection. And it's a very small cell. It's actually only pretty much one stud of space inside there, uh, just enough to fit the skeleton in. And it's a nice little addition. This is something that comes off when you put the ship back together. Um, and actually, I'll be looking to find a place where it can fit in on the island. And then very briefly, before we look at the interior of this bit of the ship, just take a look up the mast. Um, this is mostly built as it will be in ship form, obviously with the sails furled up and held in place by string. And then half the spar just here uh, gets built in the final bag of the set. Actually, it's so it doesn't clash with the other half of the island, um, but it's a nice little detail that it's kind of half wrecked. More plant detail up on the crow's nest level and all the way up to the flag at the top. These are really great flags with that skull shape that's meant to look a little bit like a minifigure's head, which is a kind of morbid, but a nice detail. And I also like the use of this string here to hold up a barrel um, that gets fitted with an actual sail and there's an extra bit of uh, spar or jib that gets put up back there. Um, but for the meantime, it just works as a uh, sort of crane to lift things around. So I've had to do a little bit of disassembly so you can get a better look inside. That is one thing I will say that it's uh, a little difficult to get inside the ship, especially this main part here. Um, there's good access from the other end, which is actually completely open. And you can see a couple of bunks in there, along with a table with a letter and a bottle and another small table with a candle and a hat on it. Um, that's all well and good. But then the other end normally has that wall that I showed you, which is this piece here. So I've just taken off some deck and pulled that off so you can see inside. And uh, when this is part of the wreck on the... Barracuda Bay. This functions as uh, Jose's Inn and it's uh, nicely detailed. It's got a barrel there with uh, some sort of drink, definitely not beer because this is Lego after all. Um, plenty of bottles and goblets and even a teacup, very civilised pirates. Um, little bar area there, another one of those little tables there. So it, it's not a huge amount of details but it does look good for what you've got. The access to the interior is definitely something I want to rectify when I do my mods to this set because um, I really want to get a, a more accurate interior for a, a working sailing pirate ship, but also easier access. Um, that being said, I really do like the details and I'll definitely be using a lot of them. Something you may notice from the inside there is that the uh, gun ports, gun ports, that sounds right, um, have actually got windows in them. So they've got windows with grills. Now the Window frames are actually structural because they hold up the pieces which actually hold these flag pieces. Um, and it's a bit of a shame that they're that shape because it makes it a little awkward to get the cannons in there. Uh, what also makes it awkward is the fact that the interior is so packed, so there really isn't space. Um, so you can just take those grills out, but what I think I might do is replace them with ordinary rectangular window pieces because then I'll still get that structural integrity, but uh, a little bit of a nicer look overall. And I've checked and there is space, so that's all okay. Another fantastic detail along here are these ladders. So the uh, entire ship has got the shape here. It's actually called the tumble home, which is where there's an angle up from the uh, go up from the waterline and then the ship actually gets narrower as you go towards the deck. And that's just been represented with these um, slopes, just the one by three or uh, two by three slopes. Um, yeah, sorry, two by three, <laughs> two by one by three or two by two by three slopes in white. But then when it gets to this ladder here, they've actually come up with a rather ingenious technique, which I, I won't disassemble the whole thing, but it's uh, we're definitely worth looking at the instructions if you want any more information. So there's actually, you can see the underside or the backside of one of them here. It's actually Technic bricks here, uh, ones with holes, ones with pins, which pivot up and then they're connected there, if it'll focus with a, uh, bars and clips and it just gives it a rock solid um, structure uh, and just creates this wonderful look of this ladder on the outside just sticking out um, completed by one that's just straight at the top. There's amazing building techniques. It's worth even just watching a speed build or uh, like I said looking at the instructions if you want to see how this thing comes together because it is absolutely amazing. Um, a lot of it is just brick stacking but then every now and again there's just uh, an amazing technique which you could really learn from if you're trying to do something similar. And now we move on to the second half of the island. So uh, this section, as I may have pointed out before, has the bow and the stern of the ship. So two thirds, um, although it's probably about half and half, considering how big the middle section is. 
and it looks absolutely fantastic. I think, if anything, I prefer this side to the other one. Spinning around to the side, I've had to be extra careful because the bowsprit sticks out and is hitting my uh, trays of pieces. And we'll start to see the details of the side of the ship, which looks amazing. Uh, these stairs, which just go into midair, they actually connect with the uh, other half of the ship, which again, amazingly, they managed to make it all link up together. And then in here we can start to see below and behind this part of the ship. Um, incidentally, such a random detail. This barrel here is in black. For no reason other than it had only appeared in one set before in black, which was a space shuttle, I believe. Um, I'll look it up and try and put a photo on the screen. Um, and it had only appeared in that set um, back in the 80s, I think. Again, I'll put the date on screen. And for no reason whatsoever, um, the only other set it appears in, according to uh, Bricklink at least, is this one. And there's only one, and it's hidden at the back here. And <laughs> I just love it as a detail. It's just completely random and... It just shows the dedication and the knowledge of Lego history that these designers have, which is amazing. Um, behind that, we've got a few more details. That's where those steps come down just there. A couple of oars clipped up on the side. You can also see there's another skeleton, the other one that I showed, the one with the hat, which is uh, just sitting there. I'm not sure what happened to him. Nothing good. Uh, more of those flowers on the seafloor, which is great. Boxes, goblets, loads of little details. Um, one of the rigging pieces is then used as a sort of ladder, I think, to be able to get up to the uh, rear half of the ship, or stern part, I should say, which in this case is uh, being used as a kitchen or a, a galley, I should say. It's, again, basic details, much like the middle section, but they look nice enough. Uh, there's a fish off to the side, presumably uh, maybe not being cooked, maybe being chopped up, and then a sort of little half there made up of some uh, bricks and more things off to the side. It's nice, it's simple. Um, obviously I showed you the doorway with the rudder from the other side, and then there's a single gun port, again with a lattice in it, um, which I'll probably take out. But overall it's a really nice detail. And then moving on upwards we have this door just here, and this is the door into the captain's cabin, which I'll show you in more detail in a different way, just a second. But we'll just carry on coming round to the front of the ship. Oh. The bow, as I should say. I'll get crucified for saying front. Um, this is just wonderfully constructed. There's um, slopes, there's studs not on top, there's this amazing wedge piece just here used to smooth the transition between the slopes and then the front. There's more windows. The bowsprit is locked off in two different places. Uh, again, a shame that this piece is colour locked, but oh well, it's not the biggest deal. Grey is just such an unassuming, inoffensive colour. Um, that is actually... Coming out just there, I've just nudged that piece there. Um, as I was going to say, these pieces make wonderful shaping on the front there. Uh, I believe this part is called the stem and it looks fantastic. Brilliant figurehead <laughs> using uh, Aquaman's hair, which uh, I can't help but see, see as Aquaman, but I suppose that's not a bad thing considering, you know, boats, sea, everything like that, it's all good. Um, and there's all this shaping down here, including an extra bit which they have you build just here to go underneath. Um, sort of the start of the keel, which then gets removed when you convert it into a ship, because this is the level here where you'd rest it on a table or a floor or a surface. Um, just again, attention to detail is fantastic. Got the sail on the front there. Um, I'm going to call this one a jib and probably be wrong. <laughs> I've been looking on Wikipedia to try and find out some uh, more appropriate nautical terms, but it is very complicated. So apologies if I get it wrong. And if anybody knows the correct term, then please let me know. Um, all the rigging is done with strings with uh, studs on the end, which is fantastic. Um, no irritating tying knots and things, and the lengths work out almost perfectly. And uh, like I said, there are a couple of extra, which is great. Another one of those pirate flags on the top, this time just a small one, um, same design, which looks great. And another one of those parrots, you actually get two in the set, which I was surprised about. And then bringing it all the way round, you can see the other side where we've got the anchor and we're back round to that palm tree. So we're now looking down on the, uh, what I think is called the poop deck or the quarter deck. Um, although I think those are technically different things. It's the part where you steer from essentially, even though the ship's wheel is ended up down here, it plugs back in into this black bit here. Um, and you can have whoever you like up there crewing the ship. Um, brilliant shaping around here. Just if I can't, I can't say enough about the way this has been designed. This is coming in from the sides, following the line of those wedge plates, and then the back is sloping up, as you can see, and everything just meets 
perfectly in here and is secured using ball joints. I mean, it. I, God knows how they worked it out. Uh, excuse my language. Um, but it is just absolutely brilliant and it feels rock solid. It's not going to fall apart on you. Um, the one part that isn't rock solid, though, is... Uh, not the cannon, which should definitely come off, but that is the actual deck itself, which is just resting in place and comes off all in one piece. So you can look at the cabin inside and it's just beautifully detailed. Um, you can't get a brilliant view because of the walls in place, but this is a decent view. You've got your captain's chair just down there, which has got the studs in the correct place because uh, Redbeard himself has got a peg leg on that side. So he's got no studs to stud in there. So it looks fantastic. You've also got uh, his bunk on the side, which can fold up into the wall. I'll just see if I can do that without getting completely in the way of the camera. There we go. Knocking the flag off. Um, don't worry, they haven't surrendered. And then there's a uh, stone bust in there. I've seen a couple of people say that they uh, think that that's a, a wig, but I'm pretty sure that's just a stone bust that he's got in the side. Whether it's of uh, somebody he knows or whether it's just plunder from one of his uh, many voyages. It's a nice look with that uh, arch piece um, in white. And then a minifigure head on top. Got a little uh, bank of candles there. Um, it's actually reminding me of uh, the organ in the Flying Dutchman um, from Pirates of the Caribbean, but <laughs> obviously with candles instead. Um, I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to be, but it looks nice. And then we've got uh, a map on the desk. And then off to the side, there's a printed compass, a quill, and then a teacup, because every pirate needs a good cup of tea. And last but not least, of course, there is one of two treasure chests, which are in this set. This one has just got some gems and uh, looks like a trophy. It's obviously won something. Um, the other one, incidentally, the other treasure chest is buried somewhere on the island. Um, who knows where it could be? Um, I know where it is. I just forgot to show it, but it's actually underneath the decking of the island and it just slides on out and that one's got some gold bars inside it. So that is everything, uh, except for one major thing, which is the ship itself as a ship all rebuilt. And uh, if you haven't noticed the video's runtime already, this is getting a little bit long and I've decided I'm going to have to do a part two where I look at the ship. Um, hopefully, all being well, I'll be able to get that out on Friday rather than uh, next Monday, which leaves next Monday free for the next Hogwarts update. Um, don't hold me to that, so if I don't manage to do that, please don't hate me. Um, I'm just, depending on when pieces can arrive, um, not going to lie, depending on money, because this set, while it was reduced, was not cheap. Um, so I've got to be uh, a little bit careful there. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to get that part two out for you. Uh, if not Friday, then next Monday. And then there's a potential part three, depending on whether I can borrow that original Black Seas Barracuda and do a comparison. This was a really fun video to do, um, an amazing build, and I would honestly recommend anyone who's thinking of getting one of these sets to go for it, um, especially if you can get it on sale, because it just makes it even better value. It's a brilliant playset. Um, I think the age rating is fair, um, 16 plus. There are a few complicated bits here and there, but honestly, if there's a, a younger someone who really enjoys pirates as a theme and wants a bit of a challenge, then I'd say go for it as well because you'll get a lot of fun and it works as a playset as the island and also as a, a different kind of playset as the ship. So uh, that's it for this part of the uh, part of the review. So hopefully see you in the next one. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think about this set and about my review. And if you have enjoyed it, please uh, give us a thumbs up down below, subscribe to the channel. I'm nearly at uh, 450 subscribers, which is amazing. So uh, it's great to see everybody enjoying my content out there. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.